Welcome to Downshift, everyone. My name is Paulo, and we have a special one today. I am with the Toyota Supra. And my name is Matt, and this is my BMW M340i. And they may not look like a conventional pairing, but under the skin, these cars have a lot in common. So today, we're going to go through what they share and what they don't, and what the difference then is behind the wheel. Let's get into it. And I think we'll start, as we talked about, with what these cars share in common. Now, obviously, they've got a lot going on similarly under the skin, and that starts with the engine. So everyone on YouTube is tired of hearing these alphanumeric names, but B58, 3 liter, straight six, twin scroll, uh, 382 horsepower, 368 yep. pound-feet of torque for both. The only difference then is mild hybrid because it's 2021 versus no mild hybrid because this Toyota bought in at the snapshot of yeah, 2020, 2020 yep. which was before they did that. They didn't advertise that it had mild hybrid until 2023, but this one does have it. So we'll talk more about that later. Um, and then transmission. Now that we've had this in the auto, speak to that. Yeah, I mean, it was it was fantastic. Obviously the ZF. Um, and I think there you can kind of maybe do the comparison of like how much did the mild hybrid impact it. But the manual in this, I'm glad that they finally brought it to the Supra. I think yeah. we talked about like we wish it would have launched with it, but it's cool that they finally brought it to the platform. Yeah. Yeah, with the auto equipped on the Supra, I mean, these cars basically from front to back are kind of the same. Yep. Same engine, trans, diff, the whole thing. Um, but this does have the manual, which you can't get in any of the B58 uh, equipped G chassis cars or the M240 or anything like that. So I really like that manual. Again, we'll talk more about that later, but that's really the major difference. Um, and then interior. I mean, this is a little bit different because it's based on the previous F chassis BMWs. But the main thing that's kind of the same is the door pull, but there's st it's still obviously a BMW interior yeah. in there, and it feels that way. Yep. Even um, down to like how the floor mats lock in, it's BMW. <laughs> yeah, it's those little tiny things. And then I think the last thing that these two kind of share is just they're both handsome. We'll talk about the differences between these two cars now, and we'll start with transmission. So auto, Manual. stick. Yep. Yeah. This is good. That's a good. That's this a good stick. is my favorite manual out of all the diff, all the Toyotas. The the GR86, the Corolla GR, um, like the engagement of this one, the throws, even just the actual like stick itself yeah. is really good. Like the yeah, proportion the knob and is, stuff. Yeah, the knob is weirdly like, satisfying. Yeah, it's it's just <laughs> it's just good. Like they got it I right. I totally I totally agree. I think this is one of my favorite manuals that's on sale today. You know, I haven't wow. driven a Porsche with a stick but I've heard they're good. I'm sure they are. Yep. Um, but aside from the Type R, this is great. This, Big claims. It's, it's got a great throw. It's nice and notchy and defined. I like the engagement. It's nice and low. I get along with second gear, which you know is my thing. It's your trouble. It's your trouble, <laughs> trouble. area. And I think what it really comes down to is I'm comparing it in my mind to the M2 stick that we had last summer. And that throw was a little bit spongier. The clutch engagement was a little less defined. And this just feels a little bit more purposeful to me. And I, I get a lot out of that. A car like you did. But you sometimes just like, have this relationship with second gear that's tough to get by I do. yeah i think i was damaged as a child <laughs> and I just i carry that trauma with me me and second gear move it on yes okay. supra real world drive the bmw comes with x drive um, but you yeah. can also get it in yeah you can get wheel. standard rear wheel uh, x drive you can get for like uh, a couple a thousand? thousand more, yeah, two. but then you get the 225s all around, which we're not going to get into this yep. video, or at least we, not right now. Yes, we'll save that for later. Um, the big thing that I want to mention while we're talking about rear-wheel drive, though, is when the Supra came with the stick, they reworked the differential in the back. And do you remember when we were on the track in the gray Supra? I have a video that I'm going to lay over now, I'm sure, of you spinning. We were doing drifts, yes. and you spun around. Yep. It's because that was an auto Supra, and that diff had a tendency to like lock, Yeah. and then it'll send the back end around. Where this, you can slide it around a lot more organically and naturally. Yeah, and I but think- But that's a thanks to the stick. The other comment I'd make on this is, while we're on this topic, I think in the same vein, um, even with traction control on, like this lets you get a little squirmy with the back end, which I kind of like. Mm -hmm. It like tries to suss itself out um, and I, I really like that. I feel like it's, it doesn't really impede what you're trying to do, which yeah. is which is really nice. Yeah, no, I agree. I think dynamically this car is, is very good. It's very good, it's hard to argue with. Yeah. And I think that brings up the topic of tires and ultimate lap time. Now we didn't take this thing around Road America because scheduling didn't work out, but I've got 19 inch wheels, 225s square on the M340. This is 255s up front, 275s in the rear. So this is Kumo Xta PS91. So 
performance tire, one of their more aggressive tires. This is an older Michelin Pilot Super Sport. So not PS4S, not PS5, S5, whatever the new generation tire is, but a lot more rubber, rear wheel drive, but this thing is also 400 pounds, I believe, lighter than my car. Yeah. So there's no doubt in my mind that this is faster around the track. Oh, without a doubt. Which then puts did, it right at Mustang GT performance pack. Did we not have a time with the Supra? Mm -mm. We've filmed with it like but twice there, it? but it's never been timed. I can't believe that. I know. This is before we had the balls to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. But now we're living reckless. But yes, yeah, so if it be if it's going to be like even a half a second faster than this around the track, then it's going to be right in line with a Mustang GT. I'd imagine. I would imagine it's probably I, a second or two. I would imagine it's probably around a second to like. I'd say it's like 0.7 to like one and a half would yeah, be my guess. Yeah, with you and then with me like two or three. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Matt is faster than me around the track. Uh, uh, okay, okay, now we get into the, the bread and butter. Yes. Daily daily driving. Yeah, why don't you take this one? Do you want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, we've talked a lot about yours. Yeah. So I'll talk a little bit about the Supra, but then... It's loud, it's stiff. <laughs> yes, but it is a little bit better with... It's better. With the... Um, the Kumos. Yes, the Kumos. The Kumos are a lot better. With taking your run flats off, which is good. Good consumer advice. Um, Take the run flats off. So the daily driving in this thing, um, my observations, the suspension is like stiff, sporty, but mm -hmm. livable. Yeah. Um, I don't think like it's anything to complain about. Yeah. I think it's you can daily drive it if you really wanted to with the suspension. I think it soaks up bumps nicely. It's really sharp and darty. Um, the steering is really precise and pointed more than like you think it would be but it's it's really really good um visibility not great not so good <laughs> not great not at so all good. it's really interesting because like you have so much headroom in there and then the roof line just keeps on going and yeah. going and going and it's almost <laughs> like it's closing up cl up on you when you're yeah. in there well it, you can even see it in the door sill right here like like i can rest my head on where the roof starts to curl down. Yeah. And I like that they've they've given you extra headroom because the, th the thought is then you can wear a racing helmet yep. in the cabin and right. be six foot and not die. But why not just end, like they could just- but Yeah, just make the door a little taller. Yeah, and or the, and, or the front window to go up a little further. But, yeah. so that was kind of it. The, the visibility out of the C pillar is a bit tragic. <laughs> um, it's like Mazda three hatchback visibility i'm really upset that they haven't fixed the wind noise yet like i know everybody in the comments gonna be like, oh it's like an eight dollar mod well it's really not i looked at a few options and it's like between 50 and 150 bucks but it's the smallest piece of plastic that yeah. basically just goes right here and i just can't believe they haven't integrated that into the design from the factory like i don't know why that just really triggers me well i think it's it's upsetting because Toyota's whole thing is like, we're going to make minor improvements every year to the car. Yep. And like the first year it came out and then the second year they added more power and then they revised the suspension. They gave us the manual. It's like, just fix this, this glaring issue. This, yeah, small thing. That's also it's a, a really easy thing. fix. Like, how much could it be? It's such an easy fix. Um, from the factory. And then, yeah, we talked about how the back end lets you play a little bit, even with traction on, which is really, really cool. Uh, we talked about the six-speed manual, the clutch engagement is on point, the stick throws are great, the feel of it, it's just like really good. Yeah. Um, but I would just say I personally would not enjoy daily driving it, most likely. Is it because of the ride or just I just think your I've, life I've personally become accustomed to having a bit more space and like I've usability. I've become accustomed to a certain standard of living. Well, well, you talk on here, you have like cargo and practicality. No, and, yeah, yeah. and I just think like this doesn't have a center console. That's fair. You I have, just more meant from like the driving perspective. Yeah, I guess the driving perspective. If we're going to silo it, the drive, you wouldn't not have it because the drive is bad. You would not have it because it's impractical. You're right. Yes. No, right? the drive is great. Like yeah. it drives really well. The visibility and stuff like that's kind of a pain but like whatever you're in an awesome sport car yeah so like i i could get, probably get past that but no that wouldn't be my my hang up on not getting it i sure. think it's great i mean it's fantastic that's the whole thing like it's best parts for a bmw yeah yeah no i i really liked it um driving it on the street it's it's a bit stiff but it's not like crashy or like harsh harsh yep. um and then yeah it's relatively quiet but it makes some sound when you're on it if you want you can throw an awe on it which maybe don't but but i mean compared I to yours it. it's it's in terms of like daily driving i think yours it's no more stiff than mine right no so yeah you're not making a sacrifice there i would say you probably have a bit more body roll in yours compared to the supra 
Yeah. Um, there's, yeah, there's 400 more pounds to throw yeah. around on this thing. This so. is a bit more pointy, darty, yeah. sport feel. Yeah. No, this is great to drive. Um, if you're going to hustle it a bit, there are going to be little, little sacrifices that you make day to day. Yeah. But yeah, there's, that's pretty typical. MPG. Um, yeah, so both cars rated at 25 MPG. Manual gets 21. Two yeah, less which gears. is a big, yeah, two less gears, but that's a big drop. Yeah. Usually it's not that big. Um, now I will say when I was driving it, I was getting like 23. So maybe a little bit better, but yeah. still not what you're going right. to get here. But again, two more gears, mild hybrid. Yeah. And there's that. Um, styling. Styling. Again, I said both of them are handsome. It's a three series. This is a long nose, low slung sports car. It looks so much more exotic. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, styling obviously subject to everyone's own opinion. I personally like the way it looks, but cannot stand certain <laughs> aspects of it that just make like me what then, aspect? then just make me hate, hate it basically the way it looks. The, just the fake vents, honestly. And it's only frustrating because you can see all three of them when you walk up to the car, the one in the front bumper, the one on the hood, and then the one in your door sill. And I don't know why that also just like drives me up a wall. I think, I think it drives a lot of people a little insane. I don't know why it doesn't really bother me. Anyway. Uh, cargo <laughs> practicality. Yeah, I mean, pretty obvious. This has like nine MP or nine cubic feet of space. The, the opening is like hourglass shaped, but yep. there's no like big part of the bottom of the hourglass. It's just like kind of wide at the top where you're never going to load stuff and then skinny. Uh, it's just like not a practical shape. Yeah. It doesn't really work. I think like I've never really craved more cargo space in my life or even thought about it like yeah. you don't you don't realize it until it's gone sort of thing and yeah. that's kind of what i experienced this week and it's just like man i could really use a center console right now or like <laughs> somewhere to put some of this stuff along the lines of practicality i don't like how you can't open the trunk from the trunk yes and you oh also there's no real good spots where you're not gonna smudge it if you just got it a, got a nice car wash that yeah. you can that you can actually lift it up. Like there's no real good spot to do that. Yeah, so tech is tech is one of the big things that stands out in reminding you that this is from 2020. Because they bought this system from BMW when iDrive 7 or whatever it is was on its way out. Yep. They were already phasing in like iDrive 8 or whatever the newer system was. And it starts to show. The screen is kind of small. There's a lot fewer things than you can do in my car. Like there's the sport, like you have some of the stuff but there's more that you can get in here. And now the newer BMWs that we're testing are on like iDrive 8.5 or 9, I think maybe. So this, the tech does start to feel old. Yeah, but for like the everyday consumer, they just really want to know if Apple CarPlay is there. That's true. And it, it is, yeah. and it works. Yep. So it may be old, but it's not bad. And it's wireless. Um, last one, price. So. This, I mean, this is obviously not the current car, but the current car starts at 59.6. Uh, it's two grand less for rear wheel drive. So like 57, almost 58, uh, versus the Supra, the most expensive that you can get, or it's the most expensive that you can get of like a Mustang and a Z. And the three liter starts at 55.4. So like $2,000 less than a rear wheel drive M340. And then you go up to 58.5, so very close to an X-Drive M340 to get the three liter premium. That's really the one you want with like the nice tech and materials and everything. And then you're right at M340 money. Yeah. And more importantly, I would say, is you're above M240 money, which gets you a bigger trunk and rear seats and the newer tech Yeah. and a newer interior. I mean, I think it makes sense why I only sold 2,500 yeah. Supra's last year. I think for me, at the end of the day, the only issue with the Supra is that it's too expensive. I can make excuses for the other stuff. I don't mind the fake vents. I don't mind the tech being a little bit old, but it's just a lot of money. It's very good to drive, but it's a lot of money. I, I just think it's, to me, it's hard to justify dailying it, which it's like, at your point, at this price point, who can afford it as like a weekend warrior car? Like I. Yeah. No offense, but I almost just think you're kidding yourself if you're like, yeah, I daily my Supra and I love it. Like, it, there's just, you're sacrificing and making so many compromises compared to some, like the Mustang GT or the, the M240. It's just like, 
Both of those cars have normal trunks. Both of those cars have rear seats. Now, you can't use the rear seats in the Mustang. You can't really use the rear seats in the M240, but you can put stuff back there. Yeah. At the very least. I and then there's this, which is very similar money, which gets you a very real back seat and a very real trunk. Right. So, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I feel like it, it, it's, it really all comes down to what are your priorities and what, how do you want to use the car, yeah. right? What I wanted to do with this whole video and this experiment was like, how close are they really? Because they share all of the same underneath components. And I think what I found is they're not that similar. Mm -hmm. They're really like, they, sh they share the same pieces, but the sum of the pieces come up to be something very, very different. Yeah. From a daily perspective and a like performance perspective, this is gonna be a lot sharper and better around a track. It's 400 pounds lighter. You got the stick. It's just, it's just too much money. And for that reason, I'll buy this again, or an M240. Yeah, I mean, that is a good point though. Like from a, from a driver's perspective, like this blows it out the water. I wish that we had right next to you, the GT, the, the Mustang, Mustang GT. That would be an awesome head to head that, comparison. That is a good comparo. Cause they're gonna be right there on the track. Yeah. But yeah, I think with that, interesting comparison, not conventional. I don't think there's really a right or wrong answer, but I think we've illustrated the pitfalls of the Supra and how it compares to some other stuff. So yeah, thank I, you Toyota for letting us have a go in your Supra. Sorry if we said bad things about it, but. I was about to say, I feel like I like was knocking on it and I, that wasn't like my intention. No, it's not a bad car. Yeah. It's no, just it's too not. expensive. Yes. And with that, thanks for watching.